All right. Anyway, um, I'm just I'm just do let's see a quick sweep. Um, I can't believe the Broncos won. Um, the Chargers are definitely bad. They're now bad. If they, I yeah, I don't believe in them I at all. I told y'all hit us. Um, I told y'all yeah. hit us. Just like how yeah, I don't think I'm picking Atlanta game. anymore. I don't. Even, um, I'm still oh, on yeah. Lynch Mania, but shout out to the Panthers. Christian McCaffrey is balling, balling. Oh like, my balling, god, balling. he's different. Um, yeah, everybody's regretting picking Saquon number one in fantasy. If you didn't, <laughs> like the CMC is wow, he's amazing. Like he's he's single handedly like elevate. Like he set he's setting the bar right now for NFL running back. Yeah, shout out to to the Cardinals for getting their first win. Uh, the Bengals are absolutely garbage. Just burn the whole team. I'll trade yep. AJ. And just you know, you know away. what's so funny about the Cardinals getting their first win, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, yeah, no, the, the, yeah, yeah, the Bengals are re- really suck. So Atlanta, who also isn't really that good in my book, plays at Arizona this week. And I mean, we'll obviously get into our picks, but it's just mm-hmm. seems like a very interesting matchup because I know a lot of people are going to pick Atlanta to win, but I don't know. Cardinals, yeah. I don't know. It, it's going to be, it's gonna be a 20 for 32 for 253. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Three yards rushing. But um, if that covers it for all of the um, uh, I think games. I one more what, thing. Talk nice, talk nice, talk nice. Oh, um, what was that? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, we didn't even talk. Oh, we didn't even talk about the Giants. Damn, we, we still got to do our teams. It's like oh, oh yeah, no, just already. Yeah, I mean, the Jets. already. Yeah, 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 there's nothing to talk about the Jets. I didn't talk about the Ravens. It's not going to be that long anyway. But, okay, um, yeah, yeah. Me talking about the Giants not really going to be much longer either. But okay, all right, cool. We uh, the last thing is shout out to Teddy Bridgewater. Oh so yeah, and um, and I saw an article today where it's like, are we fully accepting Bridgewater as the heir to Jesus? I'm not mad. Yeah, I'm not I mean, ooh, he's a free agent yeah. at the end of the season. Yeah, it'll be wild if no, they can't do it. They already paid. I was gonna say if the Vikings try and get him again, but it's too late. They they threw their money away. Um, but yeah, I can see it happening. It'll be it'll be very interesting because I think that even if he doesn't end up success success in Drew Brees, because you know he's still gonna want to play when he comes when he comes back. Mm-hmm. He if he keeps bowling out like this, he should go somewhere else and play. There's so many teams in the league that's gonna need quarterbacks. There's always teams that that need that need quarterbacks. You know, but and even if he goes, it's also got to be yeah. a good offensive system for him too. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, he could at least compete for a job, a starting job, because you can see that once he got comfortable in the offense and playing again, you know, he mm-hmm. did what he did this week. But mind you, against the Buccaneers, whose defense is average at best, but mm-hmm. still, he did he did what he had to do. Shout out Teddy Bridgewater, man. Oh, and uh, <sighs> I was disappointed Khalil Mack didn't have a good revenge game. But I did uh, pick the Raiders to win, so it worked out. Yeah, that was, that was a tough game. I wish I had thought about the fact that even though the Bears were the quote-unquote home team, mm-hmm. they were they were playing in London. Uh, so I didn't that, even realize. Yeah, exactly. They were playing. They were playing in London. I think it's so stupid that they do that. But whatever. I don't. Yeah. You know, that should be preseason, if anything. Yeah, I'm about to say. Like, think about it. The the. O- Oakland, it, like, all right, at least have an East Coast team do it where the time difference is yeah, only exactly. like five, six hours. The time the difference Oakland, is the same as if they played a West Coast game. Right, exactly. If you have if you have the rate the Raiders that play all the way on the West Coast fly from wherever the, the hell they, they played last week. They were, and it was in the Annapolis last week. That's like week. a ten hour difference. Oh my goodness, that's that's just terrible. But yeah, that's that that's annoying. And I think they fly back to to are they home this week? I'll tell you right now if they're home. Um. Well, I mean, they did. Oh no, they fly. have a, they have a bye. Oh, they actually have a bye week this week. So then, I guess they flew it, straight it, it, from it, their game though. They shoot. They flew uh, straight, straight from their game. They mm-hmm. they they flew straight from Indy to London. So they spent the whole week there. Okay. All right, that makes sense then. Well, but, at least I mean, at least they have a, at least they have the, a bye week this week. Yeah. So that. Yeah. I mean, personally, I hate the London games. I don't think it does anything for the league. It's not like. I understand why the the NFL does it, but the team they're not. The NBA has them in preseason as well. Yeah, but I mean, at least people in other countries like the NBA mm-hmm. to a point where it makes sense. I mean, they like, what are the what are the staple uh, team in London is the Jaguars because they keep sending them every single year for like the past like six seven years they've been doing this. I don't know. It's just me personally. I think it's dumb. Nobody normally the the games are at like nine a.m. Nobody's even up by then. Well, uh, you got to think it's not it's not as much for us. It's more to it's the same reason why the Yankees Red Sox was there. But that was uh, more of a that was more of a bigger deal. I feel like. Oh than yeah, for even, sure. 
Yeah, just because it's something that like doesn't need, that hasn't even ever happened. Yeah, and, but, and yeah. I will say the NFL is doing a shitty job of like the you know the 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 MLB did it for the first time and sent its most historic rivalry. Over. Yeah, like when the when the NFL sends its teams, they're not sending its best. Yeah, um, yeah they they, they sent they're sending some some mid shit, but it, even though that was a pretty decent game, though it was a good game actually. Mid like deck. Yeah, yeah, mid like deck. Mid-like. I say no, nah, not even mid like deck, mid like. Mar- um, Mariota, yeah, Mariota. He's the, as he's the most mid quarterback I Fair. can name right now. Fair, but um, uh-huh. anyways, <laughs> speaking of speak, speaking of, of mid quarterbacks, and we made uh we made uh Kirk Cousins look like uh Peyton Manning this past week. Oh, Lord, yeah. But to I'm be not fair, he you know there was no defense. So uh, that's 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 what I'm about to say. Like, yeah, I mean, you basically said said it all. We just don't have any defense. I'm, I will say that the pass rush looks a lot better in that the secondary did make a few plays, okay. but they, that's just it's just little, little little improvement. I mean, put up twenty eight on the they they still put up uh, twenty eight on us, which is like um, you know, not saying that's what I expected, but it's just the fact that um, you know, I think because the Vikings have been so bad on the road, that's probably why I picked the Giants this week. But and I also expected the offense to be a little bit better. But I I will say that you know Daniel Jones he's looking like a like a rookie quarterback again. Well, not again, but he's looking like a he's looking like a rookie quarterback. You know he's made he's he's learning. He's making mistakes, and you know it's gonna set fans back into reality because they're gonna realize that all right, we're not as good as we thought we were. You know, so we're gonna have to you know and everyone's hurt. Right, I'm about to say yeah, and win win the games that we can. And that's that's really about it, you know. So it'll be. It, oh, actually, it won't be interesting when we play the Patriots on Thursday because I we we all already know the result. But oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't wait for that game. It's all right. You're gonna watch you know. it? What am I gonna watch? Yeah, because I got a bunch of friends that keep telling me, "Oh, Daniel Jones is the greatest thing since sliced bread," and I'm like, he. Like let him breathe. Better than Sam Darnold. Let him breathe. No, he did. No, my my boy literally <laughs> oh said that God, he's better than go. Sam Darnold. And I'm like, yo, let him play first. Dang, like the honeymoon phase is crazy. Like I wasn't proclaiming Sam Darnold the greatest quarterback since sliced bread after the week one win against the the Lions last week. I mean, not last week, last year. Like, come on, you got to hamper expectations. Like I, I'm rooting for Daniel Jones. I think it'd be great if the New York had two quarterbacks playing at at high levels, but. Let's calm it down a little bit, folks. <laughs> yeah, like I said, like I said, it's good. It's bringing fans back to reality. But anyhow, we can talk about uh Baltimore. Um, gross. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the game was nasty to watch. No yeah, it, was, it was fucking gross. And again, I was a, I was at the tournament, so I was watching it in pieces. Um, shout out to NCC's Wi-Fi for being really annoying. But yeah, it, it, across the board, disappointing you're a Ravens fan, and um. I also like hope everything's all right with uh, Mason Rudolph. I the way the players were reacting, I thought he died. Oh like, my god, that was such a scary hit! And I was watching yeah. that game, yo. I was oh, like literally Jesus. in. It was when I saw him lay there, and in real time, you didn't see him get knocked out in real time. You just thought he fell, and then when he was laying there, and you had a lineman like grab his chest and like shake him, and he was like not moving at all. Usually, people don't stay knocked out for that long. Even in like fights, like in like UFC fights and shit, um, they don't stay knocked out for that long. But I feel like it was more so when Juju ran up and fell back instantly. I was like, did he die? Like, did did we just witness him dying? Um, because definitely not in the NFL do you see someone unconscious for that long. Um, it was good. It also crazy that the cart broke down, so they had to actually have him walk off. Absolutely crazy. But kind of, you know, it was a good sign that he was able to, you know, billion like, dollar like, half carried crazy. And they only had one cart. <laughs> I like, thought they this... have ambulances on scene. Like, I thought uh, it was no, mandatory for high school games, I guess. What? Um, <laughs> uh, oh no, I'm saying it's like, I've, I've like, what, how trash is that? That like you have one cart? Like, come on. Um, yeah, I hope everything's all right with him. But um, in the game in general. Uh, the run game still did well, but not as good as you wanted to. 
Uh, Lamar didn't look great. I think this is the same thing. This is everyone's come back down to earth. I still don't think this is really indicative of Lamar. Like, even the one of the picks he had, it was put exactly where it needed to be. And homie just didn't come down with the ball. It was in his hands, and he let it get taken out. You know what I mean? And that was our veteran tight end. So that was disappointing when Lamar gives him a dime, and he does that. Uh, the pass to Hollywood was great. A little worried because, you know, Hollywood got hurt that game. Um, At least he came back, though. He did come yeah, back. That That's definitely a good sign. I, I don't know. It's just, honestly, as a Ravens fan, I don't even feel like when we play the Steelers, I don't even look at it as, like, the Steelers have a home field advantage and, like, Hindfield's is, like, a difficult place to play. But I just feel like we've played each other so much, you know what I mean, and, like, have won enough times over there that I just, you know, it's, like, super regular to me. Like, I don't go in like, oh, man, I got to worry about this being a road game. And that's with Big Ben or without. But um, the way that they were able to move, even when their third-string quarterback came in, and obviously it's difficult to go get back into a flow, I saw this brought up, and uh, I really do think this is something that the Ravens should look into. Trading for Jalen Ramsey. The secondary, going into the season, was supposed to be locked down. Uh, I'm not going to say it hasn't been as advertised, because we've had so much personnel changes since then. And we lost Tony Jefferson for the season. So, you know, he tore his ACL. And I feel like now more than ever, you want to bolster that secondary. And when you have another, like, top-level corner, you know, it'll take a little pressure off the uh, those safeties, and um, especially when they're so young. Like, our, our, our safety depth chart outside of Tony and um, Earl is, is super young. So they have talent for sure. So I'm, ex- like, I'm not crazy worried, you know, Ravens are the next man up type thing. Like, um... But literally, Marlon showed, again, how he's a top corner. He's really, like, just playing well again. Uh, Put some respect on that man's name. And now, if you have the opportunity to trade for someone like Jalen, and the Ravens have cap room, you know what I mean? So when the time comes, they can pay him. Uh, Having two corners... And Jalen and Marlon would be insane, especially in a pass type lead. People are going to be playing, especially if we plan on making deep playoff push. Like you, you want to have your your secondary's got to be a lock. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot easier to find like people to rush a passer than it is to find some uh, some good corners. So I'm not I'm not opposed to trading for Jalen. I'm not, especially because the Ravens find good value at anywhere they pick them. I think I think he 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 fit right in with your, with y'all defense. Yeah. It was interesting watching that game really because. Man, I'm not really a Steelers supporter, but a lot of my friends are Steelers fans, so sometimes I just be yeah. rooting for Steelers <laughs> to win. But, nice. yo, Juju, bro, like, yo, he is a, like, damn, bro, he fumbles just as much as freaking, um, Chris Carson on the, on the, on the Seahawks. Like, Juju fumbles so much. And it was like, a lot of people, like, the most controversial thing that probably happened in that game was when, um, Mike Tomlin, when he deferred, um, and actually kicked TL first and, you know, because not saying that the offense was um, anemic, but they weren't able to score touchdowns in the second half. And it was just, and shout out to Justin Tucker because he he had a hell of a game. And, you know, he's just old, he's just always good. But um, it, and it was definitely something that I second guess. I'm like, why would he, you know, why wouldn't he just accept it? But I mean, when they got the, when they got the stop, I was like, all right, cool. But I, but I personally believe it was a game that that Pittsburgh probably should have won. It's unfortunate that you know they yeah. just they like like the way they, they fumbled the second half. Absolutely, yeah, that's yeah. It's crazy because when Juju fumbled, I'm just like, wow, like that's like this is such a a, a Pittsburgh Baltimore game, mm-hmm. and of course, it happens in overtime. But anyhow, but don't discredit Marlon on that, man. Oh, definitely. Oh, come on time, now. The first oh, time yeah, he tried well, to punch it out, didn't didn't go so hot. Well, right. I mean, I'm not saying that you know. He can't like he didn't create the play. Juju does fumble a lot. He fumbles way too much for my liking, especially as a wide receiver. Come on, mm-hmm. yo, you can't fumble that much as a wide receiver. How's but, uh, uh how's the verdict on Juju? Does that still stand? On, in terms um, of what? If um, whether whether he could be a, a number one? Yeah, I know it's difficult without a, a high quality. I, I, crack, yeah, I was about to say. But, I, I don't know. I mean, he did have that one touchdown that was that was pretty decent. The the one that uh that happened like earlier in the game. Mm-hmm. But um, you as know, I think up to this point. Season up to this point, I, I still think it's really hard to tell just because, you know, 
he doesn't have a quarterback to to the to the caliber that was uh Ben Roethlisberger, and I think he performed so well as a number two last year that mm-hmm. you know it's it's it, it kind of set the bar very high for him. Um, so I think you know based off of just what he's had with Mason with Mason Rudolph, I don't think so. But I, I I still don't think that you know you could really say that. It's not time to write him off or anything. Yeah, it, definitely not. Like I, I still think he's he's he can be a number one receiver in this league. I mean, I I, I don't know if he could be a number one, but I think he's he's still great. I think. He's still yeah, great. Most, most most definitely. Like I I feel like on most teams he probably would be a number one. Like if he was on the Ravens right now, he'd probably be the number one wide right receiver. But yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 tough. It I think he also just needs a, a quarterback that can that can constantly get him the ball, but he also has to do his thing and not fucking fumble. 